Shall it be for the rain? It raineth every day. Twelfth night, or what you will, upon a ship, a storm amain. A ship! Yet, all within are jolly, and mirth make loud. Play jests, sing songs, and welcome sweet Savior, Christ-born. Yeah, yeah. Hail Christ our King. And amongst all the sport the fair company spins, delight most find all in these two twins. like a drunken rogue, and strikes rocks submerged near foreign shores. And so in the torrent of woe and death, the twins are parted, to be seen no more. survivors, weak and wan, awakened to find with dread they have come to a country with which fell war is waged, and all trespassers better off dead. What country, friend, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. My lady Viola, perchance you yourself were saved. Ah! Not be discovered in this place. Or between their country and our two orphans, let the bloody army. Knowest thou this country? Who governs here? 
A noble duke in nature has a name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino? Oh, I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. It is so now. Oh, well, it was so very late. It is said no woman can approach his court. But from one month ago, it was fresh and murmur he did seek the love of fair Olivia. <laughs> That same Olivia, a virtuous maid, the daughter of a count who died some twelve months since, and then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who also shortly died, for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men. She looked net except no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. <laughs> And I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am and be my aid. For such disguises happily shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as a boy to him. One well, may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will make me very worth his service. What else may hap, to time I will commit. Only shape thy silence to my wit. Be you his man, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue doth blab, then have my eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead on. Appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. 
Oh, it came over my ear like uh, the sweet sound that breathes upon bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. It is not so sweet as it was before. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a, a heart, and my desires like fell, and cruel hounds ever since pursued me. Oh, how now? What news from her? So please, my lord, a mind of me submitted. But from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. <sighs> but, like horses, she'll veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round, with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. <sighs> oh. That she hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. <laughs> How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and fill her sweet perfections with one Self king. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure care is an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier at nights. Your cousin, my mistress, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. I confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in. And so be these boots, too. And they be not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my mistress speak of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight that you brought in here to be her wooer. Who? Sir Andrew Agachee? Aye, he. Well, he's as tall a man as any he's in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but it'll have but a year in all those ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fie that you'll say so. He plays with the vile de Gamboys and can speak three or four languages word for word without book and hath all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed. Almost natural. For besides that, he's a fool and a great quarreler. And but that he had the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling, tis thought among the prudent he would soon have the gift of a grave. By this hand they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Castiliano Volgo. For here comes Sir Andrew Agaface. Sir Toby Belch. How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. 
My name is Mary, <gasps> sir. Good mistress, Mary Acost. Uh, you mistake, knight. Acost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. <laughs> By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, uh -huh. gentlemen. And thou that part so, Sir Andrew, wouldst thou might never draw a sword again. And you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw a sword again. Fair maiden, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have. And here's my hand. <laughs> well, sir, thoughts is free. I pray you take your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. <laughs> <laughs> Wherefore, sweetheart, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Oh, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. Um, but what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, I let go your hand. I am barren. <laughs> O oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, methinks, unless you've seen canary put me down. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I'm a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. <laughs> and I thought that I'd forswear it. <sighs> I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or do not? Oh, I would have had bestowed that time in the tongues as I had in fencing and dancing and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. <laughs> Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would that have mended my hair? Past question, for you see, it will not curl by nature. Well, it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. Ah. <laughs> uh. Faith, I'll be home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. And if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Tut, there's life in it, man. Mm -hmm. I'll stay a month longer, then. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world, and I delight in masks and revels sometimes all together. Art thou good at these kickshaws, is knight? Ha, as good as any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be, under the degree of my betters, yet I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a galliard, knight? <laughs> Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. But I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Are they like to take dust, like Mistress Small's portrait? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a Caranto? My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water than in a syncopace. <laughs> What dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg that it was formed under the star of a galliard. Let me see the caper. Higher. Excellent.
you know, if the Duke continue these favors toward you, Cesario, it, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you're no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call and question the continuance of his love. Is he in constant, sir, in his favors? <laughs> no, believe me. Ah, thank thee. Hold, here comes the Count. Who saw Cesario? Hey! Upon your attendance, my lord, here. <laughs> Stand you a while aloof, Cesario. Thou knowest no less but all I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at thy doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow until thy hast found audience. Sir, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as a spoke, she never will permit me. <laughs> oh, be clamorous. Uh, leap all civil bounds rather than make an unprofited return. <laughs> I, I do... Uh, speak to her. Uh, unfold to her the passion of my love. Uh, surprise her with the discourse of my good faith. If she will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio's of more grave aspect. Uh, I think not so, my lord. <laughs> oh, dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that they say thou art a man. <laughs> Diana's lip is not more smooth than rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ. <coughs> Shrill and <coughs> sound. <laughs> and all is semblative a woman's part. I know thy consolation is right apt, and I know that it will do well for this affair. <laughs> Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call thy fortunes thine. Uh, I'll do my best, my lord, to rule your lady. <sighs> Yet a bearful strife. Whoever I woo, myself would be his wife. well hanged in this world needs to fear no colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Lenten answer. I can tell you where that saying was born of, I fear no colors. Where, good mistress Mary? In the wars. And that you may be bold enough to say in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools, let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or be turned away. Is that not as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. <laughs> and for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute, then? Not so. I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold. Or if both break, your gaskins fall. Apt. In good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way, then. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, Thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue! No more of that! Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely. You were better. Wit 
and be thy will. Put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do very oft prove fools. And I, that am sure I lack thee, may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinaeplus? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Uh, did you not hear, gentlemen? Take away the lady. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, and then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he be no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Uh, virtue that transgresses, but patched with sin. And sin that amends, but patched with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve, so. If not, what remedy? As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty's a flower. The lady bade take away the fool, so I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prison, in the highest degree, lady. Curculus non facet monachium. That's as much to say as, I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexteriously, good Madonna. Make your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I fear his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool! The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the bangs of death shake him. Infirmity which decays the wise, thus ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity, the better increasing of your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for tuppence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I mar your ladyship take delight to the barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day by an ordinary fool that had no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest. I take these wise men that crows over these set kind of fools no better than fool zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail. Nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now Mercury endue thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. Uh, madam, there is a young gentleman at the gate that much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam. Your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick, or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull, Jove, cram with brains, for... Here he comes. One of thy kinsmen as a most weak piamater. Upon mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. <clears throat> Plague on these pickle herring. How now, sought good Sir Toby? Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. There's one at the gate. I, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, any will, I care not. Give me faith, say I. Aye. Well, this is all one.
<laughs> what is a drunken man like, fool? Oh. Mm. Like a madman, a fool, and a drowned man. One drought above heat makes him a fool. A second mads him, and a third drowns him. Go, fetch the crown, or let him sit in my cause. He's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Uh, he is but mad yet, Madonna. And the fool shall look to the madman. <laughs> Madam, yond young fellow swears he'll speak with you. I told him you were sick, and he takes on himself to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seemed to have a full knowledge of that as well, and therefore comes to speak with you. <laughs> he's, what's he said to him? My lady, he's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a ship, I suppose, and be the support of a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Of mankind. What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no. Of what personage and years is he? Well, not yet old enough for a man or young enough for a boy. As a squash as poor as a pea scout or a cooling board when it is almost an apple, it is with him in standing water between boy and man. He is very well favored and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Come, throw my veil on my face. We will once more hear Orsino's embassy. <laughs> The Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatched beauty. <laughs> I pray thee, tell me if this be the Lady of the House, for I never saw her. I'd be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. <laughs> Good beauties, let me just say no scorn. I'm very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentleman, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain, if you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And tis poetical. Tis the more like to be feigned. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. It is not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. Some malification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive branch in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? That rudeness that hath appeared in me, I have learnt from my entertainment. <coughs> what I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most excellent, accomplished, A comfortable beauty. doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? 
In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by method, in the first chapter of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good gentle one, let me see your face. Have you a commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? Now you are out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done. If God did all. Tis in grain, sir. Twill and your wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you will lead these graces to the grave, and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried, and every article and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips, indifferent red, two green eyes with lids to them, one neck, one shin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. Lady, my lord and master loves you. Oh, such a love could be but recompensed, though you are crowned the non-peril of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, with fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's stead, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! You should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Uh, above my fortune, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless Perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feeding post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. And so let your love, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy face, thy tongue, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? Thinks I do feel these youth's perfections an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eye. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Go after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or no? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor to hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If he should come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do, I know not what. Fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thyself, thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be. And be this so. Oh, 
Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Yes, sir, and on moderate pace I have arrived since but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You want to save my pains by taking it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance that she will none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. I receive it so. She took the ring of me. Well, none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her. And her will is, it should be so returned. Well, it be worth stooping for. There it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath charmed her. She did make good view of me. In fact, so much that show me thought her eyes had lost her tongue. For she did speak in start distractedly. <gasps> she loves me, sure. Oh, the cunning of her passion. Invites me in this churlish messenger. Why, none of my lord's ring, why he sent her none. I am the man. Oh, if it be so as tis. Oh, poor lady, was she a better love a dream? What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. Oh, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Time! Thou must untangle this, not I. Tis too hard a knot for me to untie. Stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you. By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. In the malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore I shall crave of your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. For it would be bad recompense of your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whither you are going. You must know of me then. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian of Massoline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and his sister, both born within an hour. If the heavens had been so pleased, would we had so ended. But not an hour before you rescued me from the breach of the sea was she so drowned. Alas, the day. Lady, sir. Though it was by many she much resembled me, it was by many accounted beautiful. Come. She is drowned, sir, with salt water. Though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Forgive me, young Tenio. Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes, and deliculo surgere thou knowest. <clears throat> In faith, I know not. But what I do know is to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? <laughs> In faith, I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Mariah, I say, a stoop of wine. 
How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now let's have a catch. Three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? There's three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life? There's three blind mice, three blind mice. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you all out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Cation. We are politicians. Malvolio's a Pega Ramsey and Three merry men are we. <laughs> Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? To leave that way, lady. Three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmers like she cut up a chest with a carving knife. You'll never see such a sight in your life as three blind mice. Excellent! Why, this is the best fooling when all is said and done. Now, a song! Come, here's a sixpence for me. Now let's have a song. Aye, there's a testrel in, a, a, in it for me too. If one night give Don't another you have a love song, or a song of good life. A love song. A love song. I care not for the good life. Uh -huh. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming. That can sing both high and low. That can sing both high and low. And in lovers meeting Every wise man's son doth know Every wise man's son doth know Is not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. What's to come is still unsure. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youths a stuff will not endure. Youths a stuff will not endure. Youths a stuff will not endure. A mellifluous voice as I am true knight. A contagious breath. Aha, very sweet and contagious. To care by the nose, it is dulcet and contagion. But shall we not make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we not rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall we do that? And you all be the do it. A dog and a catch. Ah, by your lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. Oh, hold thy peace. <gasps> Excellent. Let our catch be. Thou knave! Uh, hold thy peace, thou knave knight. 
I shall be constraining it to call thee a knave, knight. Tis not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool, it begins. Hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Come, begin. Hold thy peace, and I pray thee, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, and I pray thee, hold thy peace. Thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou art a name. Thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou art a name. Thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou name, thou art a name. He does well enough to be so inclined, and so do I too. He does it with more grace, but I do it more natural. Uh -huh. On the twelfth day of December, my, my true love gave to me. Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten wars a leaping. My masters, are you mad? What are you? Have you no wit, manners, or honesty in you with a gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an outhouse of my lady's house that you squeak out your goiser's catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Have you no respect for place, persons, or time in you? Oh, we did keep time, sir in our catches. <laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she is no way allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself from your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it please you to take your leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. <laughs> Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Hey, Sir Toby. His eyes do show, his days are almost done. Is it even so? <laughs> but I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. Well, this is much credit to you. Shall I bid him go? <laughs> what if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare. Out of tune, sir, ye lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art good that there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. Thou art in the right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. A soup of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Oh, go stick your ears! It <laughs> <laughs> is good as deed to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him the field, and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet sir, Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the counts was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio. Let me alone with him. If I do not gall him into a nay word and make of him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> what, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason for it, but... I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything more than a time pleaser, an affectionated ass that cons state without book, and utters it by great swords, the best persuaded of himself. So crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all who look on him love him. <laughs> and on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistle of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, 
He shall find himself most feelingly personated. <gasps> I can very, very much like your mistress, my niece. On a forgotten matter, we can scarce make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. He shall think, by the letters that thou wilt drop, that they come from my niece, and that she is in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And now your horse would make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant the two of you, and let the fool make a third, wherein he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. For me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle. True bred, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. <laughs> Let's to bed, knight. Thou hast need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me cut. And I do not. Never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come night. Come night. some music. Now, good Cesaria, uh, but that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, methought it, it did relieve me my passion much, more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy-paced times. Come, but one verse. Uh, he is not here, so please your lordship that should sing it. Who should sing it? Firstly, the jester, my lord, a uh, fool, the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. Well, seek him out and play the tune a while. How dost thou like this tune? Aye, which gives the very echo to the seat where love is thrown. <laughs> thou dost speak masterfully. Oh, my life upon it! Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favorite love. <laughs> hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. Oh, what kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. Oh. Well, she is not worth thee, then. <laughs> Uh, what years, in faith? About your years, my lord. <laughs> oh, well, well, too old by heaven. Uh, let thy love be younger than thyself, for thy affection cannot hold the bend. Do, for women are as roses, whose fair flower, being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. <laughs> So they are. Alas, that they are so. To die, even when to perfection grow. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, oh fellow, come! Uh, the song we had last night, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. Do. Uh, mark it, Cesario, for it is plain and old. The spinsters and knitters in the sun, and the free maids that weave their thread with, with bones do use to chant it. <laughs> It is silly smooth, and dallies with the innocence of love, like the old age. <laughs> Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee, let's sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away. Fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair cool day. My shroud. 
out of life's circles with you. Oh, prepare it, oh, prepare it, my part of death, no one so true did share it, did share Not a flower, not a flower sweet On my black coffin let there be strong Not a friend, not a friend sweet My poor corpse where my bones shall be There's for thy pains. No pain, sir. We take pleasure in singing, sir. Oh, I'll pay thy pleasure then. True enough, and pleasure shall be paid one time or another. Now give me leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta. For thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere. For it's such that always makes a good voyage of nothing. <laughs> Farewell. Oh, let all the rest give peace. Oh, once more, Cesario. Get thee to yond, some sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not a quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed on her. Tell her, I hold her as giddily as a fortune, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir, I cannot so be answered. So, but you must. Say that some lady, yes, perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must not she then be answered? Oh, there is no woman's sides that can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. Well, they lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, but mine is as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare. 
between love a woman can bear me as I owe Olivia. I but I know! What dost thou know? They do well what love women to men may owe. And faith they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. <laughs> she never told her love. But let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined and thought, and with a greened and yellow melancholy, sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too. And yet, I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple at this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to see the rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know he brought me here out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here? To anger him, we'll have the bear again, and we will fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not, his pity of our lives. Here comes the little villain. How now, my medal of India? Get ye all three to the box tree! Malvolio's coming down this walk. He's been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this past half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know that this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of jesting! Lie thou there. For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. This is but fortune. All is fortune. For I once told me my lady did affect me. Besides, I've heard herself come this near that, should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. <laughs> Besides, she treats me with more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What shall I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace! Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced plume. Slight, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Rogue! Pistol him, pistol him. Peace, peace. <laughs> well, there's an example for it. The lady of the star team married the yeoman of the wardrobe. <laughs> Fie on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. <laughs> Holding my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a day bed where I've left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone. Oh, peace, peace.
And then to have the humor of the state. <sighs> and then to have the humor of the state. To baffle Sir Toby. Bolts and shackles. Oh, peace, peace. And after a demur travel regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to call for my cousin Toby. Seven of my oh, people. Peace, peace, peace. No, no. With an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while, and perchance mind my watch. i play with my so much jewel. Toby approaches, courtesies there to me. Shall this fellow <coughs> live? Though our silence be drawn from us with guards, yet peace! Quenching my familiar smile with a austere regard of control, saying to him, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time on a foolish night. That's me, I warrant you. <laughs> One, Sir Andrew. I knew twas I, for many do call me fool. <gasps> oh, what employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace, and the spirit of humor intimate reading aloud to him. Why, this is my lady's hand. These be, sir, these be her very C's, her U's and her T's, and thus make she her great P's. Tis in contempt of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's. Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. <laughs> Soft, by your leave, wax. <laughs> and the impression of her Lucretia, with which she uses it to seal. Tis my lady. Who should this be? This wins him, liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows? The number's altered. No man must know. This should be thee, Malvolio. Mary, hang thee, Brock. I make a man where I adore, but silence like a Lucretian knife. With a bloodless stroke, my heart doth go. M-O-A-I to sway my life. A Fustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I to sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What a dish of poison has she dressed him. And with what wing the staniel checks at it. I may command where I adore. She may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. And that alphabetical position, what can that portend? If I could make that resemble something in me, softly. M O A I. Oh, I, make up that. He is now at a cold scent. So will cry upon for all this, though it be rank as a fox. M! Melvolio! Why, M that big is my name! <laughs> Did I not say you would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. Ahem! <laughs> but then there's no constancy in the sequel. Well, that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. Aye, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry, oh. <laughs> and then I comes behind. Aye, and if you had any more I behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M-O-A-I. <laughs> this simulation is not as the former. And yet, to crush it a little, it would bow to me. For every one of these letters is in my name. Soft. He follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars, I am above thee. But in, be not afraid of greatness. 
Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them. And to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite of kinsmen, surly with servants. Let thy tongue paying arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. <laughs> and wish to see thee cross gartered. I say remember, go to, thou art made if thou desires to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and campaign discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off roast acquaintance. I'll be point of eyes of every man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me. For everything excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. <laughs> and she did praise my leg being cross gartered. And in this, she manifests herself to my love, and by a, a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I think my stars I am happy. I'll be strange, stout in yellow stockings. Even with the swiftness of putting on, Jove and my stars be praised! Uh, here's not the postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore my presence still smile. Dear my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile! <laughs> I will do everything that will help me! <laughs> to be paid from the Sophie. <laughs> I could marry the swenge for this device. So could I, too. And ask no other dowry with her but just such another jest. Yes. Nor I neither. Here comes <laughs> my noble gull catcher. Will you set your foot on my neck? Or on mine either? Uh. Shall I play my freedom at tray trip and be thy bond slave? In faith or I either? Why, thou hast put him in such a dream <laughs> that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true. Does it whack upon him? <laughs> like aqua vitae with a midwife. <laughs> If you would then see the fruits of this sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and it is a color she abhors, <laughs> and cross garters, a fashion she detests. <laughs> and then he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him out into a notable.
be friend in thy music, dost thou live by thy tabor? No, sir. I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? Not so, sir. But I do live at the church, by the church, and that I do live at my house. And my house doth stand by the church. So one may say a king dwell by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him. Or that thy church stand by thy tabor if thy tabor stand by the church. Troth, sir. I can yield you none without words, and words are grown so false, I am loath to prove reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Oh, not so, sir. I do care for something. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. And if that be to care for nothing, I would it would make you invisible. Nay, and I'll pass upon thee. I'll no more with thee. Hold. Here's expense for thee. And now, Jove, in this next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. <laughs> ah, tell thee, I am almost sick for one, though I would not have it grow upon my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, if being kept together and put to good use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia and bring a Cressida to this Troilus. Ah, uh, I understand ye. Tis well begged. My lady is within, sir. I will constir to them once you are. Once you are, who you are, or what you would, are out of my welkin. I would say element, but the word is overworn. Oh, goodness. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. Oh, he must observe the mood on whom he jests, the quality of persons, and the time, and. Like the haggard, check it every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice, as full of labor as a wise man's art. For folly that he wisely shows is fit, but wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et vous aussi votre serviteur. I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. Oh, I will answer you with gate and entrance. But we are prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. The youths are rare courtier. Rain odors? Well. My matter hath no voice, madam, but your most pregnant and vouchsafe ear. Odors, pregnant, and vouchsafed. I'll get them all three ready. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. You are my duty, madam, and most humble servant. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir? Was never merry world since lowly feigning was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his needs must be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than you. From the spheres. Madam, give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To you enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hideth my heart. So, let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love? No, not a grise. 
But is a vulgar proof that off we pity enemies. Well then, methinks tis time to smile again. O oh world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth are come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Uh, then westward ho, and good grace and health attend your ladyship. You owe nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Stay! I prithee, tell me what thou thinkst of me. I think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then you are right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that mocketh thy pride, no wit, no reason can my passion hide. Extort not reasons from this clause, for that I will thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason better. Love sought is good, but giving unsought is better. <laughs> by my innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor ever none, shall be mistress of it, save I alone. And so, adieu, good madam, never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou mayst yet move that heart which now pours to like his love. Now not say a josh longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. In faith, I saw your niece do more favor to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Uh, did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Slight, will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jury men since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awaken your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have then accosted her, and with some excellent jests fire new from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. The double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle in a Dutchman's beard. Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt of either valor or policy. And it be it with any way, it must be with valor. The policy I hate. Ugh, had his leaf be a brownest as a politician. Why then, build me thy forces upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it. And assure thyself, there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It's no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and fun of invention. Taunt him with a license of ink, if thou thou'st him some price, twill not be amiss. And as many lies as will lie in thy sheet of paper, although the sheep are big enough for the bed of ware in England, set him down. Go, about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter. About it. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. Go. <laughs> This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have endeared to him some two thousand strong or so. Look where the youngest <laughs> wren of nine comes. If you desire the spleen, and will laugh yourself into stitches, follow me. Yond go malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado, for there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He's in yellow stockings! And cross-guarded? Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps the school in the church. Ooh. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point that was in the letter, which I dropped to betray him. He 
does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as it is. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. And if she does, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. <laughs> Come, bring us. Bring us where he is. stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. Jealousy, what might befall your travels, being unfamiliar in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My kind Antonio, I can all your answer make but thanks. But as my worth is as my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. Come, uh, what's to do? Shall we go see the, the relics of this Town? Uh, tomorrow, sir. Best first go see to your lodging. I'm not weary, and tis long till night. Come, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of fame that uh, do renown this fair city. Would you pardon me, sir? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once, in a sea fight against the Count in his galleys, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here would scarce be answered. The like you slew a great number of his people? The uh, folk was not of such a bloody nature, albeit the quality of the time and the argument may well have given us bloody quarrel, for which, if I be lapsed here, I shall pay dear. Do not then stand too open. It doth not fit, sir. Hold. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet, whilst you beguile the time and Feed your eyes with the viewing of this town. Why I your purse? Happily, your eyes may light upon some toy you have wished to purchase, and your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. Very well. I will take your purse and leave you but an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Come, how shall I feast him? What bestow on him? For youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He's sad and civil. Suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure, uh, possessed. Madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, 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 no. He, uh, he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he comes. For sure the man's tainted in his wits. Go, call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. Sweet lady! Ho, oh, oh. ho! Sad? I could be sad, lady, if thou desires to be so. This, this does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as a very true son it is. Please one, and please all. <laughs> <laughs> None black in my mind, they're yellow in my leg. Did put his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Hey, sweetheart, then I'll come to thee. God comfort thee! <laughs> <laughs> 
Why dost thou kiss my hand so often? How do you, Malvolio? Oh, at your request, uh, nightingales answer daws. Why do you appear with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, twice well read. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Remember the men of thy yellow legs, and yellow? wish to see thee cross garden. Go to, thou art made, if thou desires to be so. If not, let me see thee a servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Madam, the young gentleman that the Count Ursino is returned. I could hardly entreat him back if he attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You come near me now! No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me! This concurs directly with the letter! For she says to be opposite of a kinsman, surely my servant! Cast thy humble slough, says she. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself in the trick of singularity. And then consequently, she sets down the manner how, as with a reverent carriage, a sad face, a slow tongue, as is the habit of some sort of note, and so forth. I have limed her! But it is Jove's doing. And Jove made me thankful! And when she went away, just now, have this fellow look to. Fellow. Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, everything adheres together! There's no drama of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no one got to go and or unsafe circumstance! What more can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospects of my hopes! Joe, not I as a doer of this, and he is to be thanked! Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If legions of hell be drawn in little, and legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak with him. Here he is! Here he is! How's it with you, sir? How's it with you, man? Go off! I discard you! <laughs> Let me enjoy my private. Go off! Lo! How the whole fiend speaks within him! Sir Toby, did not I tell you? My lady prays you to have a care of him! Go to. Go to. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is it with you? What man defy the devil consider he is an enemy to mankind? <laughs> you know what you say. Ha! And you speak ill of the devil? See how he takes it to heart! Pray God he be not bewitched! Turn and carry his water over to the wise woman. Marry it shall be done tomorrow if I live. My lady will not lose him for more than I'll say. Ha <laughs> ha! Does she now? <laughs> oh Lord! Prithee, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, and I pray thee, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is not the way. Do not see you move him. Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. <clears throat> the fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how now, my bawcock? How dost thou, uh, Chuck? <laughs> Sir? I, Biddy, come with me. What man, tis not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan? Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers, Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all, <laughs> you are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. <laughs> you shall know more hereafter.
Is it possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. His very genius hath taken the infection of the device. Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taint. Where we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the opinion that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance, till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him, at which time we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. But see, but see. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. Warrant there is vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Ah, is it. I warrant him. Do but read. Me. <clears throat> Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief, and to exceeding good sense less. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me, Good. thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still, you keep on the windy side of the law. <clears throat> Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself, thy friend. As thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Agacheek. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You may have some very fit occasion for it. He is now in conference with my lady, and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the orchard, like a, a bum bailey. So soon as thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. For it comes to pass oft that a terrible oath with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off, gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! Nay, let me alone for the swearing. <laughs> I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Here he comes this way with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, and presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honor to a cherry on it. But what will you ask of me that I'll deny that honor save me upon asking gift? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I've given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. Fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save you. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature are the wrongs thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. Dismount thy tuck, be yar in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel with me. My remembrance is very free from any of image of offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your guard, for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish a man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? He's a knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies he hath divorced, uh, three. And his incentment at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Hobnob is his word. Give it, or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. Back you shall not to the house, unless you undertake that with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore on. Or strip your sword stark naked, for metal you must, that's certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beg of you to know of the night what my offence to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Fabian, stay with this gentleman to my return. I pray you, madam, what is he? Or do you know of this matter? 
I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal adventurement, but nothing of the circumstance more. What is he? Uh, nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you are like to find in proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could have possibly found in any part of Illyria. Will you not walk towards him? No! I will make your peace with him, if I can. Oh, I'll be much bound to you for it. I am one that would rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. Why, man, the very devil. I have not seen such a virago. I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground they step on. They say he has been offensive to the Shah of Persia. Please on it! How? Mess with him. I will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. I thought he'd been valiant and so cunning. You've seen me down there. I challenged him. Let him let the matter slip. And I'll give him my horse, Grey Capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. So end without the perdition of soul. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have convinced him to use the devil. She is as horribly conceited of him, and Johnson looks pale, as if a bear were on his heels. Sir, there is no remedy. He will fight you for oath's sake. Mary, he had better be thought of this quarrel. He now finds that scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw. For supportance of his vow, he protests he will not hurt you. Oh, pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I am lacking of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it. But he promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on. Oh, pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you, tis against my will. To it! give offense, I take the fault on me. But if you offend him, then I for him defy you. You, sir, why, what are you? One that, for his love, dare yet do more than you have heard him brag to you he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Ha! 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 Oh, good sir, Toby, hold! Here come the officers! I'll be with you anon. I pray you pick up your sword. Mary, will I? For that, I promise I'll be as good as my word. So bear you easily and reigns <coughs> well. These are the men. Do the office. Antonio! Uh, you do mistake me, I, sir. I arrest you at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir. No, Jot. I know your favorite well. You may you have no seek up on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. <gasps> this comes of seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer for it. Ah. Uh, what will you do? Now misfortune makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than for what befalls myself. And yet you stand amazed. Be of good heart. What? <laughs> I must entreat of you some of that money? What money, sir? For the fair kindness you've shown me in partly being prompted by your present trouble out of my lean and lowly ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. Uh, hold, I'll make division of my profit with you. Here's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so unsound of a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses I have done for you. I know of none, nor I know you by your voice or any feature. Heavens themselves! Ah. Come, sir, I pray you, go! Now, let me speak a little. 
This young man you see before you, I dragged one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable devotion, offered I praise. Come, sir, away. But oh, how vile and idle proves this God! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good features shame. In nature, there's no blemish but the mind. None may be called malformed, but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauty is evil. Our empty trunks are flourished by the devil. The man goes The mad. devil. <laughs> Methinks his words do from such passion fly. But he believe himself. Also do not I. Oh, prove true imagination, prove true. That I, dear brother, be now taken for you? Come hither, knight. Come hither, Fabian. We'll whisper o'er a couplet or two of most sage saws. He named Sebastian. Him, he my brother know, yet living in my glass. Even such and so, in favor was my brother. And he went still in this fashion, color, ornament. For him I imitate. Oh, if it prove, tempests are kind, and salt waters fresh with love. A very dishonest poultry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty is shown in his leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. And as for his cowardship, ask Fabian. A coward, a most devout coward. Slight. Religious in it. I'll after him again and beat him. Do, cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Come, let's see the events. I dare lay any money, twill be nothing yet. by my lady to bid you come speak with her. No, your name is not Master Cesario. No, this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. I pray thee, vent thy folly elsewhere. Thou art a knowest not me. Vent my folly. He has no doubt heard this of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I pray thee, ungird thy strangeness and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I pray thee, a foolish... Oh, uh, am I mad? How was the stream? <laughs> or else, this is a dream. If beauty still, my sense in leaf steep, if thee be thus to dream, so let me sleep. Nay, come, I pray thee, would thus be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, <laughs> and so be. <laughs> Quickly. Put on this robe and carry this crucifix. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. I'll call Sir Toby the whilst. Hurry! Well, I will put on this gown, and I will dissemble myself in it, but would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I, not being tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student, but to be said a, a, a careful man and a good housekeeper goes as well as to say a wise man and a great scholar. The competitors enter. Jove bless thee, Master Parson. 
Buenos dias, Sir Toby. <laughs> As the great old hermit of Prague, who never saw a pen ink, very quickly said to a niece of King Gorbaduk, that that is, is. <laughs> so I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. <laughs> For what is that but that? And is, but is. <laughs> to him, Sir Topas. What ho, I say! Peace in this prison! The knave counterfeits well, who, a good who, knave. Who calls there? Tis I, Sir Topas the curate, come to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Sir Topas! Sir Topas! Good Sir Topas, go to my lady! Out thou hyperbolical fiend, how vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Topas. Sir Topas, narrowest man that's wrong! Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness! Fie, thou dishonest Satan! For I am one of those gentle ones who will use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that this house is dark? As hell, so dumbass! Why, it hath bay windows as transparent as barricados, and the clear stores toward the north-south are as lustrous as ebony. <laughs> Yet complainest thou of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark! Madman thou errest, I say there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, no ignorance was dark as hell, and I say there was never a man thus disabused. I am not, I am no, no more mad than you are! Make the trial of it! In any constant question! What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? <laughs> <laughs> At the soul of our ground, they may happily inhabit the bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and nowhere proves opinion. Fare thee well, madman! Remain thou still in darkness, for thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I allow of thy wits, lest thou kill a woodcock, and fear to dispossess the soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well. Oh, so topaz, so topaz. My most exquisite Sir Topas. Nay, I am for all waters. You might have done this without the cloak. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and tell me how thou findest him. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were. For I am now so far in offense with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Ooh. My lady is unkind, pretty. Ooh. Alas, why is she so? Ooh, she say. loves another. Who calls, huh? Good fool. Go, as ever. You know, I deserve well of me. Uh, my hand. Uh, help me to a candle, a pen, and ink, and paper. As I'm a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? I, good fool. But, alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Fool, thou art never a man and so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. Uh, but as well? Then you be mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have propertied me here. Keep me in darkness and send ministers to me, ashes to try to face me out of my wits. Alack what you say, sir, the minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thou to sleep and leave thy vain bibble babble. Sir Topaz! Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with you, Sir Topis. Merry amen, sir. I will, I will. Oh, fool! Alack, oh, I say! Alack what you say, sir. I am shent for speaking with you. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this 
and I am, good fool, some ink and paper and light, and convey what I'll set down to my lady. It shall advantage me more than ever the very letter did. Well, I'll help you to it, but tell me true. Are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. But I, <laughs> I will help you to lighten paper and ink. Fool, I will requite thee in the highest degree. I bid thee be gone. <laughs> I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again. In a trice like to the old vice, your need to sustain. La, 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 with dagger of laugh, in his rage and his wrath. Rise up, ha, to the devil. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This Percy gave me, I, I did feel it and see it. Though. Tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. For doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all other discourse that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and, and wrangle with my reason that I am mad? Or the lady's mad? <laughs> but if it were so, she could not command her followers, sway her household, and take and give back dispatch in their affairs as I, with such a, a stable bearing as I do perceive she does. There's almost something deceivable in it. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine, if you mean well. Now go with me and with this holy man. Plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal, for as you are willing, it shall come to note. What time will our celebration keep according to my birth? What do you say? Um, madam, I will follow this good man. Having sworn true, will ever be true. And lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Mistress Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. <laughs> this is to give a dog, and in recompense, desire my dog again. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. I know not what. 
distraction. Notable pirate! Thou saltwater thief! What foolish boldness brought thee to thy mercies? Whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies. Noble Orsino, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief nor pirate, although on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. Uh, a witchcraft drew me hither, that most ungrateful boy there by your side. From the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was, his life I gave him, and did thereto add, without retention or restraint, my love. Purely for that love did I place myself into the dangers of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, Whereupon his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing while one could wink, denied me mine own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. And for three months hence, no interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. <laughs> Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. Uh, but for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but no more of that and none. Take him aside. What would, my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Oh, gracious Olivia! What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings, hath breathed out that error devotion tender, what shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it like to the Egyptian thief at the point of death? Kill what I love! A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this. Since you to non-regardance cast my fate, and that I partly no, the instrument that screws me from my place in your favor. Live you, the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your minion, whom I know you love, by whom, by heaven I swear, I tender dearly. Him I will tear. Out of that cruel eye, where he sits crowned in thy favor, in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love, and despite a raven's heart, adopt a dove. And I most chuck and dab and willingly to do the rest a thousand deaths will die. There goes Cesario. After him, I love more than these eyes, more by my life. More by all mores than e'er I shall love well. <gasps> I, me, detested! How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Oh, come away! Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband! Husband! My husband! Can he that deny? Husband! <laughs> Her husband, Sora! No, my lord! Not I! Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear which makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Oh, welcome, Father, Father, I charge thee by thy reverence, here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness what occasion now reveals before it is ripe, what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love. Confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony. Oh, thou dissembling cub! 
What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle in such a case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Well, farewell and take her! But direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth shall never meet! My lord, I do promise! Oh, do not swear! Oh, little feet! For the love of God, your help! Send the sergeant to Sir Toby! What's the matter? Ah, he broke my head across and he's given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb, too. Oh, for the love of God, for the love of God, your help! I would rather than forty pound I were at home! Who hath done this, Sir Andrew? Oh. The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. I thought he was a coward. But he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. <laughs> oh, the lightnings, here he is. You broke my head across, and that that I did would have set on to do it by Sir Toby. What? Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more. If he had not been in dream, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. Oh, how now, gentlemen? How is it with you? That's all one. Has hurt me and there's the end on it. Sot, did see Dick Surgeon Sot. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby. Oh. An hour agone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. And he's a rogue and a passy measures painting. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? Come, Sir Toby. I'll take care of you, for we'll be dressed together. Will you help? An asshead and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin-faced knave, a gull. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. Um, madam, I, I hurt your kinsman. <laughs> but, but if we're, it were not for the blood of my brother, for wit and safety, I, I would have done no less. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I, I do perceive I hath offended you. But come, sweet one, forgive me, if, if not for the vows we made each other not so long ago. Uh, <laughs> one face? One voice, one habit, two persons. A natural perspective, this is, and, and is not. <laughs> Antonio, <laughs> hell, the hours have racked and tortured me since I lost the... Sebastian, are you? Does that so fright you, <laughs> Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? <laughs> An apple cut in two is not more twin than these. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful! <laughs> Do I stand there? I never had a brother. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. But come, what kinsman are you to me? What, what name? What parentage? Of Nessa. Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery too. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. The spirit I am indeed, but in that dimension I am grossly clad. But within the womb I did participate where you, um, a woman, as the rest goes even. I should let my tears fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. Mine did too. <laughs> and died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. That record is lively in my soul. 
My father did indeed finish his mortal act the, the day that made my sister 13 years. It's nothing less to make us happy both. But this, my masculine usurped attire. Do not embrace me. To each circumstance and place and art, time do cohere and jump that I am the old man. <laughs> Which to go here, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden's knees. All the fortune that hath occurred to me since hath come between this lady and this lord. <laughs> My lady, <laughs> you've been mistook by the nature of her bias. Um, you would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, yet as the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most holy wreck. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou hast never, well, thou shouldst never love a woman as to me. <laughs> and all those sayings I will over swear, and all those swearings keep us true. As doth the continent orbit that doth sever night from day. <laughs> oh, give me thy hand! <laughs> oh, oh, your master quits you for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your tender and soft breathing, and since since you called me master for so long, well, well here is my hand. <laughs> You shall, from this time, be your master's mistress. <laughs> if I have a sister, you are she. And let me see you in your woman's weeds. <laughs> the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maiden's gums. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, he now is at some durance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman, the follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. Alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. How does he, sirrah? Oh, he holds Beelzebub at the staff's end, as well a man in his case may do. Has here writ a letter to you, which I should have delivered today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Give it me. Look then to be well educated when the fool delivers the madman. Did he write this? Aye, madam. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring Malvolio hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you, here at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, I am so apt to accept your offer. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Madam, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You cannot now deny it is your hand. Who write from it and hand or phrase? Or say, tis not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of that. Well, grant it then. And in the modesty of honor, tell me why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Baby, come smiling and cross-gartered and to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. And then acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be in prison, to be kept in a dark house, and visited by the priest, and made the most notorious gap in gold that ever invention played upon? Tell me why. 
Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character. But out of doubt, tis Maria's hand. And now I do bethink me, t'was she who first told me thou wast mad. Then came in smiling, and in such forms as here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. I prithee, be content. This practice hath most surely passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak. And let no quarrel, nor no brawl, to come taint the condition of this present hour which I have wondered at. In hope it shall not, most freely, I confess myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter, at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sportful malice it was followed may pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some men are born great, some achieve greatness, <laughs> and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sertopus, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad, but, do you remember? Madam, I marvel that you laugh at such a barren rascal, and you smile not, he's gagged. And so the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you! He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him, and entreat him to a peace. He hath not yet told us of the captain yet. When that is known in golden time convents, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we shall not part from hence. Oh, Cesario! Cesario, come! Oh, well, you are a man, for thus you shall be known. Well, you are a man. <laughs> <laughs> but when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen.
time ago the world begun with the hair he ho the wind and the rain. But that's all one our play is done. We'll strive to please you every day. Every day. <laughs>